Hello, and welcome to this next lesson on paradoxes. Paradoxes are statements that result in an inconsistency. Consider these two examples. This statement is false, and I always tell lies. These two statements cannot be true and false simultaneously. The reader is left in a conundrum. If the statement is true, then it's wrong because the statement is false. If the statement is false, then the statement must be true since the statement is false. Thus, a paradox results in a puzzling problem that cannot be resolved. With paradoxes, logic is sometimes defied. Other times, it involves circular reasoning. And occasionally, the paradox results from an invalid argument. Upon more thorough analysis, it's often discovered that definitions need to be clarified and rules refined. In the grandfather paradox, a time traveler emerges 50 years earlier to see what life was like in a previous generation. But when he explores his own family history, he kills his own grandfather before his mother and father were born. Thus, he cannot exist. So traveling back in time causes an enigma. Oh, great Scott! Jennifer could conceivably encounter her future self. The consequences of that could be disastrous. Doc, what do you mean? I foresee two possibilities. One, coming face to face with herself 30 years older would put her into shock and she'd simply pass out. Or two, the encounter could create a time paradox, the results of which could cause a chain reaction that would unravel the very fabric of the space-time continuum and destroy the entire universe. Granted, that's a worst-case scenario. Here's another one. Bobby has had five birthdays. Each time he has a birthday, his family throws a huge party. On his fifth birthday, when Bobby is 21, he graduates from college. Is that possible? Sure, if his birthday is on February 29th, leap day. A form of Russell's paradox is given in the story of a librarian who discovers a problem. The librarian has a set of catalogs of various books in the library. Some of the catalogs list themselves in the book, and some of them do not. In order to simplify this problem, the librarian makes two more catalogs those that list themselves and those that do not. The question the librarian must resolve is this. Should the catalog which lists the other catalogs that do not list themselves be listed in itself? If it is listed, then by definition it should not be listed, but if it is not listed, then by definition it should be. This paradox explains that the set of all sets that do not contain themselves leads to a contradiction. Bertrand Russell is the father of set theory. He struggled throughout his life to resolve problems related to sets. Some paradoxes are both true and false. For example, what if you walked into a room and stood in the doorway? One foot inside the room and one foot outside. You are at the same time both inside and outside of the room. Then I ask you, are you in the room? To which you have no answer because you are inside and you are not. In a similar vein of thinking, students constantly tell me that they believe math is dead because the subject has been the same for centuries. In fact, mathematics is dynamic and ever-changing. So I ask you, is our world static or dynamic? Can we change our patterns of behavior? Or are we pre-programmed to live a scripted life? You decide. Some individuals believe that we have a prescribed destiny and that destiny determines their fate. Others believe that they can dream it and achieve it. Well, both are correct. Deepak Chopra wrote an article that appeared in the April 19, 2011 Huffington Post on the paradox of scientific proof and public opinion. It's an interesting article because he talks about how we are desensitized by massive amounts of data, the wrong conclusions people conjure, and how public opinion sometimes trumps scientific fact. He presents the spurious conclusions people make and how sometimes science actually leads people down that path. He uses the link between cell phone use and cancer, which most people believe are highly correlated. However, recent studies with very large data sets show that cancer is not significantly increased by cell phone use. So which is more believable, scientific evidence or public opinion? Or put another way, which is true, what people believe to be true, their superstitions, or verifiable scientific evidence? The word paradox originated in the 1500s from the word paradoxon, para meaning contrary to, and doxa meaning opinion. In our current lexicon, the word paradox is commonly used to refer to an irony or a contradiction. Paradoxes typically come from philosophy, mathematics, or English. 
but can be found in the creativity of the mind's imagination. For example, the artwork of M.C. Escher is fascinating and leads those who view his art down a path of incredulity. Consider his work called Drawing Hands, or his drawing called Reptiles. If you look at Escher's images closely, you will question what's truly happening and will see remarkable perspectives that defy one another. Even abstractions lead the viewer to a new depths of thinking. Paradoxes make us think, wonder, and delve into our curiosity for the unresolved. Critical thinking is at the heart of the questions we ask about life. Paradoxes can bring out our passion and challenge us to discover what has yet to be created. I leave you with a paradox to ponder. Nothing is impossible. Thus, if it is impossible, then it's wrong, because nothing is impossible. Galileo once said, mathematics is the language with which God has written the universe. Thus, if we are to use this language well, we must be cognizant of the questions that arise when we use paradoxical arguments or confusing statements. Have a wonderful day pondering paradoxes you stumble across in your life. Until next time, this is Rachel Winston signing out.